boys are already playing. I noticed some cans in the yard. I recognize those cans from home. The boys were drinking in here. I didn't want them to think I was a fool, and I didn't want to leave. They offered me a beer, and I said no, but I was thirsty, so I went into the garage for a soda. It all happened quickly after that. They were grabbing at me, my chest, my <coughs> butt, even my... I tried to make light of it. Come on, guys, knock it off. But they persisted, and they had me on the oily, dusty cement floor by now, trying to kiss me while they manhandled me. smell their beery breath. I can still see their bloodshot, hungry eyes as they try to unbutton my shorts. They were like dogs at me. I kicked at them and I spit in their faces. I was able to run out the side of the garage door. And as I heard them wrench open the big garage door, they were yelling at each other to get me. I pedaled away down the street. I could still smell them on me. I was dirty. I was humiliated. I was tired. I was stunned. And I was embarrassed. I went to the drugstore to wash up, and the owner recognized me. He asked me what happened, and I said, I fell off my bike doing a wheelie. And he believed me. I rode my bike home and jumped in our pool. I never felt so good to be home. I never told anyone what happened until I was on self-doubt
inflicted upon her body. It's hard to imagine her as much more than a child herself. Her organs are also damaged. Her growth, body, mind, and spirit, they've all been stunted. She refuses to enter into an inpatient treatment program. But enough intensive therapy, she... I don't think it's about being fitting into the next size down. Heck, there is no smaller size. It's about control. Compulsion. The kind that would drive a vegetarian to consume 10 pounds of meatballs. A healthy eater. To consume two donuts in a city. It all seems so contrary. It always did. All four of our daughters are beautiful and talented, but she was our star, our performer. <coughs> she had the most amazing singing voice. Could seriously make you cry. She was always a bit shy in life, but all of that self-consciousness seemed to disappear when she was on stage. But strategizing or even fantasizing about a career has become out of reach for her as well. The first time she was hospitalized, she was 12, and she nearly died. <clears throat> At the time, we thought it was linked to some of the events going on in our family. The divorce did a number on all of the girls, but this was the worst of it. Maybe it was connected, but the other girls were able to move on much more easily than she did. And then her first year of performing arts school it went so well. We all flew out for her final performance of the year. Her acting was good, but her singing stood out. Everyone said so. And then the self-destruction again. That's what seems to happen with her. Every time things start to go well, it starts up again. First, it starts with the pushing of the food around the plate after going through the theatrics of cooking a huge meal. And then it gets to the point where you can't buy baked goods in bulk too early to make Christmas cookies because you'll come home to find everything. The five pounds of sugar, three pounds of nuts, five pounds of brown sugar, flour, coconut shreds, chocolate chips, all of it gone. It's a true story. How does one consume such quantities of uncooked food? I doubt she baked those actual batches of cookies herself. Would she really just shovel the contents of the bags down her throat? I couldn't bring myself to ask. We couldn't talk about it. She'd never talk about it. <clears throat> you know, there are two things that families of bulimics don't talk about. The money and the plumbing. Because to do so would be callous. My daughter was never able to get on her own two feet financially lived on her own. We'd constantly be shelling out money. We always wondered why. When she was working so much, did she still need so much help? And at the time, we had to give, so we helped. Eventually, she got too sick to work, and she moved in with us. We watched our food bill grow to five times its original size. Well, she just kept getting smaller and smaller. That's not the half of it. We paid for inpatient treatment programs, outpatient treatment programs that unless I physically brought her to, she wouldn't go to. And we have guilt because we haven't done as much for our other daughters. And we have guilt when we think about the money. The money that has been flushed literally and figuratively down the toilet. Suffice to say, I never knew what a close personal friend of the family of a plumber would become. But I wouldn't blink about the money or the pipes. If I knew my baby girl was okay, I'd give anything for her to live a happy, normal life. For her to know the joys of family and food. To have children of her own. To see how beautiful she really is. And to see me die first. And yet she slowly continues to kill herself. We tapped ourselves out financially. 